Hi again, I am back to um, discuss two more books. Um, I talked uh, in the beginning um, <clears throat> when I was trying to learn. There were very few books in the library where I, the libraries that I had access to. Um, and maybe it wasn't just that I had um, uh, limited access in those libraries. Maybe it was because I didn't know who I was looking for. Because remember, um, in my day, we didn't have a computer we could go to and search for what was even in the library. We had to go to the old card catalogs. So if you didn't have an idea of a name, and you didn't have an idea of a title, you had a hard time um, trying to find these books. Um, you also had a hard time because the powers that be did not, if they allowed the books in the library, they were not going to make it easy for you to you know, locate them. Um, so the way I got on to um, the Tree of Life, the Kabbalist concepts, um, the things the Freemasons were doing, and um, the Golden Dawn, I actually learned of the Golden Dawn long before I learned uh, really what masonry um, practices were, even though I had some older relatives that were actually Freemasons. 32nd degree, but by the time I realized the valuable resources they would have been, they had already passed. But um, the reason that I, I learned of the Golden Dawn was because uh, I am related to the writer William Butler Yeats. And I was going through his books and had run across in the library one that was um, like his journal. And uh, <clears throat> there were, and reading his um, biographies and, and those kind of things brought up, um, he had a lot of different facets to his life. You know, he was a, an activist. He, he, um, was for um, freedom of the press and he was anti-censorship in a time where there was a lot of that going on. Um, he was a major occultist and that flagged me and I wanted to know more about that. So I started delving deep into that aspect of him to, to further what I really wanted to look at anyway. And um, he he had known a lot of interesting people, um, and he had been involved with organizations um, and people like Madame Blansky, and then the uh, I think I said her name wrong, but um, but um, the Golden Dawn was one of those that he was in, in involved in, and. So, learning about the Golden Dawn, you one of the basic concepts that you're going to learn is the Kabbalist, the Kabbalist theories, and how you work it. And it's going to be high ceremonial magic, and um, uh, but the concepts and stuff. So, unless you were a Freemason, you probably didn't have access to those kind of books, and unless you were a member in the Golden Dawn Society was uh, uh, the way that they did their their thing. This is not practical. There was no way that I was going to be able to to be one of their initiates in any way, shape, or form. But it didn't mean that I didn't want to learn. So I eventually found a couple of books. Um, one of the books that I studied was the uh, by Dion Fortune again, um, the Mystical Kabbalah, and um, this book, Kabbalah's Concepts, um, by William Gray. 
um, William G. Gray. And it's Kabbalah's concept for living, living the tree. Now, the two books have um, totally different ways of uh, going about. Dion Fortune's book is more about taking you through the concepts of each stage of the tree of life and the pathways and the workings and the correspondences. To give you an example, um, Benet, which is the third um, um, spot on the tree of life, which would be considered the ultimate of the divine feminine aspect. It would be the primordial goddess, the primordial goddess energy. She sits on the very top of um, the pillar of severity, and um, it, it'll take you through. So when it goes to that, that aspect, it'll tell you the title and the meaning, B'nai, is understanding. And then it even gives you the Hebrew spelling. It gives you all the different things associated with that. Um, the magical image is a mature woman. Um, the situation is at the head of the pillar of severity in uh, the supernal triangle. Um, it gives the final foundation of that triangle. Without it, there wouldn't be a triangle. Um, titles given to B'nai is Ama, the dark sterile mother, um, the bright fertile mother, the throne, the great sea, um, gives you a god name, an archangel, the order of angels that are under there, the mundane chakra, um, it would be Saturn-like, um, spiritual experience, vision of sorrow, um, the vice would be Arvis, the correspondence in the microcosm, the right side of the face, and it goes on and gives you even the tarot card um, correspondences, the colors, um, depending on which level of the planes you're on. Um, it gives you the symbols. Um, Yanni is one of them, which is um, the vicious the Pisces, the cup, the chalice. So in other words, the female reproductive, um, all, the, all of the... Symbols of the female, the divine feminine, um, and reproduction. And then it'll give you all these different concepts underneath it, things that you need to know about this. And it's quite a few pages just on the particular one. Um, it is, it goes from it's over 20 pages for each um, each situation on the tree of life and it'll it'll take you through concepts that you need to learn and understand about that um, and then you know the workings the magical workings that would fall under that you would understand um, as you were trying to climb up or climb down the tree of life, you would understand how you work that. Um, there's also the, um, the the major arcana and the tarot that is also part of that in the pathways between the two, the between two stations on the tree of life. Um, it it goes through everything. Um, like it says, Benet, the great mother, sometimes called Mariah, the great sea, is of course the mother of all living. She is the archetypal womb through which life comes into manifestation. Whatsoever provides a form to serve life as a vehicle is of her. It must be remembered, however, that life confined in a form, although it is enabled thereby to organize and on so evolve, is is much less free than it was when it was unlimited through also unorganized uh, on its own plane. Involvement in a form is therefore the beginning of the death of life, and it is straightening and a limiting and a binding and a constricting. Form checks life, thwarts it, and yet enables it to organize. 
seen from the point of view of free moving force, incarnation in a form is extinction. Form disciplines force with a merciless severity. So that's also Binet is the concept that that um, what the God wants in Chakma, which gives you the spark of life, that means the God is the bringer of light and the bringer of life. But it is the Bane, that divine feminine that actually manifests, um, that primordial ocean, that deep, dark black matter where all things come from. Um, she's the one that implements what the God kind of wants, like his spark. But as she brings it into manifestation, the only thing that manifestation now has being confined is is to die. So that's the concepts of B'nai and why the mother is considered the bringer of death. It's also why the mother is considered the severity um, issue. Although a mother is compassionate and caring and nurturing and all of these things, um, the concept is from a more spiritual aspect that now that um, that aspect has been brought into manifestation, now it's into a, a physical form and therefore limited and with each and everything that you have, basically there's a give and a take. Uh, a pro and a con. Um, when they're limitless form, they're unorganized and not and out there everywhere. But when they are organized and stuff, then there is going to eventually be death and decay. So um, I do like her book because it also basically teaches you um, deeper concepts of the tarot cards as well. Uh, and a lot of other things that you can use um, each one of these um, chapters for. So it teaches you again, taking you into deeper concepts of a lot of different things that witches use on a regular basis. And that's why I think um, learning the tree of life, I'm glad I learned it in the very beginning because I probably wouldn't have been so interested in it later on had uh, I gotten some information under my belt because it, it it is harder aspects to learn but when I was starved for knowledge that's where I found my first knowledge from is in these um, books um, the reason that I like this one um, the Kabbalah's concepts is because it takes you through workings um, a lot of it is some of the great, the um, first initiations into the first um, degree, the, the Masonic um, uh, teachings and stuff like that. Their their first degree, second degree, that kind of thing. And it is where it introduced me to the concept of nothing, the concept of um, God is is in everything but he's everywhere but he's nowhere and that energy kind of the concept of putting the circles around us as well too um, that they don't go just around on the floor but they're also above we're in a whole completely contained sphere um, these these things were some of the basic principles of how I learned to cast a circle. Whereas a lot of the other books that um, I've come to read later didn't really un explain the concept of that circle as well as the Kabbalist um, theories on it. And that took it to a whole new level and better level for me. And I think that I'm very thankful that I found these things first, actually. Um, because I knew about that bubble, and it wasn't you know, it was just a a ring on the floor that you were in. You were creating it from above, down below you, and you were cutting yourself out of time and space. 
And that kind of um, concept, although sometimes they did have it in some of these other books, they didn't have it a lot, and um, they didn't go into it in great depth. And I think that really learning to work the tree of life even at a basic level, if you can't get into some of the real deep um, philosophies in it and concepts, anything that you do uh, read on it and stuff, I think that um, it can enhance your other learning. I'm a big believer of not just taking the information from a particular path or source, but if you can apply science books, if you can apply um, the, the Kabbalist um, theories, if you can come, it, it will so enhance um, what you know. Um, this life is just a never ending um, cycle of knowledge and learning, and, and you're co I'm constantly looking for new concepts and new thought patterns and new things to keep my magic going deeper and becoming more and more meaningful to me. Um, and with that, you start getting not just knowledge, but wisdom. And um, that's some of the type things that you go through to be going through these next levels and acquiring um, more and more wisdom. Um, it's how you understand these concepts at such deeper levels, and I do believe that everybody should have some form of, uh, of this kind of concept on their shelves so that you can understand your path better, because it's not that I'm saying that you need to be a Kabbalist. I'm saying more the fact that it will enhance your workings, your magic. It will help you understand the different planes of the astral. It will help you um, go deeper into whatever path you're choosing because it can help explain um, deeper levels of concept of what you're working with in principles. And um, that would be some of um, my best advice is just to always look for knowledge everywhere. Don't just count it. Um, don't even just count religions that you don't necessarily believe in because there will be key concepts in there that sometimes are more easier to understand in that realm than it is the ones that you're getting from your own. I've taken from every path that I've studied. I enjoy finding out uh, about other paths and that kind of concept leads me to being that eclectic witch that I I love. I can't really even tell you anything more about my spiritual path than it is eclectic because I I've learned from everywhere and um, in my opinion it's for me and this is only for me that it is the only way I could do it, to be confined to one religion, one spirituality, is suffocating to me. I want to know more of the universal philosophies, the ones that tie us all together and not take us apart and, and divide us up. I don't want to ever say one way is the wrong way. I just pull from these religions what I see as truths. Because those truths are great truths. They're, they're truths for all of us. And um, I haven't found one religion that teaches every truth. And that includes um, paganism. We've got, well, actually, paganism, I guess, because paganism is such a broad stroke of, of the spectrum, I guess paganism would be where you would find all of that. Um, because... That's, that's why I'm a pagan. <laughs> I will definitely call myself a pagan, but I won't call myself Wiccan or um, any of the other actual specific paths. And not because I have anything against them. It's just that they're confining to me. They're, they're a label I choose not to put on myself. Have I studied Wicca? Yes, I have. And I've gotten a lot of good information from there, too, so I'm getting me wrong. Um, 
But I've studied a lot of the world's religions, and I have pulled the best of the best, the things that spoke to me, and what I saw um, universal and the commonalities between all of these religions and stuff. And it seems to me that when they're the basic principles that tend to be in every religion I've studied, then they're the universal truth. And um, I, I prefer doing doing that that way. And I do include science in that as well, because again, science is not all knowing either. But there are some universal truths, and some of science is actually explains magic and explains why it's real. Quantum physics is a big topic for me. I love it and I will be doing further videos on that as well. Um, but that's all for now and y'all have a wonderful day. Blessed be.